Well, here we are to starting a new chapter. So let's begin with a little bit of vocabulary. Now, all of the information we're talking about today can be found in Lesson 3.1 in your book, okay? So first of all, we're talking about differentiability. If a function is differentiable, that means that the derivative exists, or that means that there is a slope for a tangent line. If it's differentiable, then it has a derivative everywhere in its domain. So that means I can draw a tangent line with a slope every x value within the domain. The second criteria is that it must be continuous and smooth. So your function must be continuous within its domain. Now, if the function is on a closed interval, you need to look at the endpoints, and the endpoints must have a one-sided derivative. Okay, so let's look at a couple of examples. Now, this first example will look very familiar to you. We've um, done problems like this last chapter. So the first definition that we have for derivative is if we want to find the derivative of f of x, then we look at the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Let's take a look at the quadratic function, f of x equals x squared. Now, first of all, is this a differentiable function? Does the derivative exist at every point? So yes, I can draw tangent lines at every point, and it is a continuous function. So let us proceed. So we are going to find the limit as h approaches 0, and so then I'm going to replace x with x plus h. So it's going to be x plus h squared minus f of x, which would be x squared, all over h. Okay, and we're going to do our algebra then. So we're going to multiply, square the binomial. So we get x squared plus 2xh plus h squared, subtract x squared all over h. And we see that we have x squared minus x squared. So these functions will reduce out. Now just a quick pause. I hope that you are copying this example down into your notes, of course, and so that you have these two examples that we're going to be doing. Continuing on, I notice that in the numerator we have an h in common, so I'm going to factor out the h, and so I'll have 2x plus h all divided by h, and the h is reduced out. So I'm left with the expression 2x plus h, and as h approaches 0, then our derivative function will be 2x. And that's using the definition we established in Chapter 2. Okay, great. Now moving to this alternative definition of derivative. Now you'll notice it's very similar, but this is more of looking at, um, at a point as x equals a. So it's the derivative of f of x as x approaches a. You, it's basically, you can notice it's the change in y over the change in x. So we have the change when the input is x, subtracting by the change when the input is a, all over the difference in the x values. So let's do an example. Now, remember, we have to, in order for it to be differentiable, it must be differentiable at every point within its domain, and it must be continuous. So the function square root of x, if we look at the square root of x function, so within its domain, we know that we do have tangent lines at every point, okay? And we do see that it's continuous. So it is differentiable. Now let's apply this alternative definition to this function. So basically then, what we're going to look at as x approaches a, so we have f of x, so substitute x into the function, minus f of a, so substitute a into the function, all over x minus a. Now again, we're looking for the limit. Now nothing reduces here, I can't factor anything, and if I substitute a for x, I'm going to get a zero denominator. Well, Another way of maybe breaking this up a little bit is let's multiply by the conjugate, the square root of x plus a. Remember, that's one of our options of being able to manipulate the function so the limit, we can find the value of the limit. And if we multiply square root of x minus a times square root of x plus a, we end up with x minus a in the numerator. And then the denominator, we have x minus a times the quantity, the square root of x plus the square root of a. And we can see then the x minus a's will reduce. So I'm left with the limit as x approaches a of 1 over the square root of x plus the square root of a. And now if I substitute the value um, as x approaches a into the function, so we replace x with a, I end up with 1 over square root of a plus square root of a. Or another way of writing this, whoops, or is 1 over two groups of square root of a. 
and that would be the function for the derivative as x approaches a. Okay, so both of these definitions are very similar. Um, a little, there's a little com complexity in their difference. Make sure that you know both of them. You must know both of them. Now, the last thing we're going to talk about is, like last chapter, there are a lot of different ways to describe derivatives. So you would want to write these down so you get familiar with this. So f prime x, that indicates find the derivative of f at x, find the slope of the tangent line. y prime, the derivative of the function y. This is interpreted as the derivative of y with respect to the der derivative of x. Okay, here we've got the derivative of f with respect to x. And then here is the derivative of the f function at x. All of these things are telling you to find the slope of the tangent line for your function at x. That's it for now, so make sure you do the problems that you were assigned and have these notes with you tomorrow in class.